I can't believe I'm actually trying this. Wobbuffet is one of the most interesting Pokemon in the game, still to this day. Like Ditto, it's a gimmick Pokemon, and its gimmick is, well, it's unique. Wobbuffet only gets four moves. It starts with those four, and that's all it will have. Those moves are Counter, Mirror Coat, Safeguard, and Destiny Bond. In Pokemon Gold and Silver, those are all the moves Wobbuffet can learn meaning those are the only moves we're going to have to beat the entirety of Johto, and then Kanto, and then maybe even Red. There are many, many challenges at Gold and Silver that end at Red. For those of you who haven't watched a video of mine before, here are the rules. You can pause the video if you wish to see them. Pretty simple stuff. I use one Pokemon, no items in battle, nothing too crazy. The only crazy part is trying to do all this with a Wobbuffet. And in order to illustrate why, I'm actually going to go right to the first of 16 gym battles with Faulkner. Because the main way Wobbuffet deals damage is by taking damage. In this battle, we're going to use the move Counter. The way it works is simple. If Wobbuffet is hit by a physical attack, it deals back twice the amount of damage it took. So to give you a tangible example, that Pidgey second attack, which was a crit, dealt 8 damage to me, meaning I dealt to Pidgey with counter 16 damage, which was enough to knock it out. Pidgeotto just uses Gust, and all I have to do is use counter, I have a berry just in case, so even if I get bad luck, I will win. So Faulkner was pretty easy, but the reason Faulkner is so easy is that his Pokemon do not have any status moves, and they only had physical attacks meaning it was just a matter of having enough HP and using counter. As the game goes on, it will be up to me to guess whether or not the opponent will use a physical or special attack in order for me to correctly predict whether I should use counter or mirror coat. Most of the early game, they only use physical attacks. Having said this, let's fast forward to Bugsy's gym and battle these twins, Amy and May, which are anagrams of each other. The reason why they are difficult is that Spinarak knows Poison Sting, which will eventually poison. Now, if I use Safeguard, I can avoid that, and I screw up here and I get poisoned anyway. But the bigger problem is when we get to Lediba. It doesn't like to attack me much, and I would just run out of counter, because realistically, I just have to spam counter and hope it goes for tackle. I can't know what it's going to go for. It's not good AI in red and blue. And so I would run out of counters and be unable to knock them out. Thankfully, there is a secret fifth move Wobbuffet could learn. Not one I want to use, but one I can use, which is Struggle. Struggle is a 50 base power typeless move. A quarter of the damage ideal gets dealt back in recoil. Using Struggle, the twins ended up being unbelievably easy. Even though Wobbuffet's attack is pretty bad, this is early game, most of the Pokemon like Spinarak and Ladybug aren't very good themselves, so against random trainers, it is often far faster and more consistent to just use Struggle, while against gym leaders, it doesn't always make sense to do that. However, there is one massive caveat to Struggle. In order to use it, you need to use up all your power points. And Wobbuffet has a ton of power points. 70 to be exact. So you need to either use the old rod to get some Magikarp or encounter some Hoppip. And you can use them all up, but it takes a really long time. If you heal in the Pokemon Center, then your power points come back. You got to restart the process, which is very tedious. Because of that, I wanted to try Rival 2, and the reason why will become apparent very shortly. The Rival leads off with Ghastly. In order to hit Ghastly, I need to use Struggle. Why? because Ghastly only knows physical moves, and Counter is classified as a fighting type attack, meaning it does not hit ghosts. The only way I'm going to be able to beat Rival 2 is with Struggle. But, as you are seeing, while I make a very valiant effort through this battle, once we get to Krokona, even though our HP looked really good to start the battle, we were paralyzed from the Ghastly, and slowly but surely, the Krokona was able to whittle down my HP, we weren't doing enough damage with Struggle, and we lost. 
This is annoying because I do plan to battle Bugsy by using counter because I think that will be much easier. And so I'm going to have to go back and get struggle again, which I mean for you guys is fine because of the power of editing, but for me is pretty tedious. To save myself the trouble, I decided to try battling Bugsy with struggle. The Metapod went down pretty easily, but once Scyther came out, it was clear this was not going to work. I didn't deal nearly enough damage with struggle, and Fury Cutter doubles in damage every time it is used. It is super effective and absolutely obliterated me. So I have no choice but to use counter, which should make this battle very easy. I'm going to be honest, I really didn't want to have to go through 70 more power points. So I did try battling the rival again, this time with the Paralysis Cure Berry. Gonna be honest, didn't really do all that much. So finally I had to relent, heal up in the Pokemon Center, and battle Bugsy for real. Bugsy leads off with Metapod, and right off the bat, I was starting to realize a potential problem. It's the same problem I encountered with the Lediba. Bugsy's Metapod knows Tackle, String Shot, and Harden. The problem is, it wasn't dealing a ton of damage to me, so Counter wasn't doing all that much damage, and I was worried I would run out of power points. By the time I knocked out Metapod, I only had 9 remaining. Scyther, on the other hand, became very easy. I did a ton of damage after the first counter, and the second one knocked out the Scyther. The problem is, I knew at that point the battle was over. I had 7 power points left for Kakuna, and if I used Safeguard and didn't get poisoned, I was likely going to run out of counters before the battle was done. Like Metapod, it has Harden and String Shot, so I needed to come up with a different plan, and I realized what that plan would have to be. I would need to use up the power points of all my other moves, except for counter, and when I ran out of counters, I would simply then go for struggle in battle. So that's what I did, I went, found a Magikarp, wasted all my power points, and went to battle Bugsy again. This time, Metapod was a little bit more annoying. I actually think he used identical amount of string shots, but it missed twice with Tackle, which has only a 5% chance to miss. And because of that, I had only 7 counters remaining for Scyther. That said, it was almost a good thing, because Metapod can't poison me, and doesn't do very much damage when it does attack me. And Scyther, we already know, is going to be a 2-hit KO, assuming it doesn't get a crazy critical hit or something. Kakuna, I just need to knock it out before it knocks me out. And I also have equipped the Poison Cure Berry, so for when I get poisoned, I don't have to worry about that, and the battle went extremely smoothly. But the good times don't stop at defeating Bugsy. Because I used up all my moves during the Bugsy battle, I now have Struggle for Rival 2. Even if I need to level up, I have enough money to buy Super Potions, so I should be able to keep leveling up until I'm able to defeat Rival 2. I ended up needing to level up all the way to level 22. Ghastly would be a 2 hit KO, assuming it didn't put me to sleep. Zubat could confuse me, which sucks, but theoretically would be a 2 hit KO. Since it used a Leech Life, it was a 3 hit KO, which is fine. That gave me 90 HP for Croconaw, and because of my higher level, I'm both dealing more damage and the water guns aren't doing quite as much damage to me, so while it takes quite a few hits, I am able to knock out the Crocona with plenty of HP to spare, and finally, about an hour into the challenge at 4 times speed, so about 4 hours of in-game time, I'm able to make it past the Johto equivalent of Cerulean City. Traditionally, this is when the game starts getting very difficult, but I had a feeling that with counter, Whitney would be pretty easy. Honestly, it was the Clefairy that I was more concerned with because it can use a bunch of moves. It goes for Double Slap, and it looks like I'm only dealing damage based off one of the attacks, probably the last one, which is very bad. But it gets worse. Clefairy can use Metronome. It gets Tri-Attack, a powerful normal move, and I get burned, and my counter fails. It seems as if Counter and Mirror Coat will not work against Metronome because it itself isn't classified as an attacking move. That is extremely annoying and will make battling Whitney the worst. Now, you might notice a very long pause here. That's because this video was done live on my Twitch channel 
where I couldn't understand what had just happened. When I do these runs on Twitch, sometimes I'm a little distracted, so I was confused as to why counter wasn't working, thinking I might have clicked the wrong button or something weird had happened, and it wasn't until I thought about it that I realized what I know now, you can't counter or mirror coat metronome. And because of that, Clefairy is able to slowly whittle down my health with that very fluky burn and knock me out. So hilariously, Whitney is still going to be very challenging, just not for her mill tank, which is usually the problem. I really didn't know how I was going to do this because countering double slap seemed to be one of my only options since mill tank is going to be almost impossible if I have to rely on struggle. So Clefairy goes for double slap, I go for counter. This is going to take a lot of turns. It goes for metronome and goes for belly drop. Oh <laughs> my god. Oh my god. Not only is it going to lose half its health, double slap's going to do more damage. Oh my god. There's double slap. It's still doing like nothing. Oh wow. I can't believe it. All right. Metronome sucks. Headbutt sucks. The flinch doesn't matter. There's double slap. All right, we only have 47 HP for Miltank. Actually, we have a berry, so 57. There's its famous rollout. We go for counter. Doesn't do a lot. Rollout. Counter. No way. No way. Oh my god. I was pretty pumped when this happened. Yes, this is unbelievably lucky. And those of you who are used to my red and blue solo series think I'm going to reset here. But there is no way in the home for infinite losers that I am going to reset. This is a very difficult challenge. When you get good RNG, you take that. You take it and run. The only alternative was to level up a ton and try to use struggle or get absurdly lucky with critical hits on double slap and metronome luck. It would have been awful. So I was more than happy to put this battle behind me and move on to another gym leader that will probably give me a lot of trouble, Morty. Now, gold and silver are kind of unique, especially when you compare them to modern Pokemon, in that after you get through Goldenrod, a huge portion of the game opens up to you. You can go to Ecratique, but you can actually head all the way to Olivine, where you need to talk to Jasmine in order for her to tell you that you need to get the secret potion for Anfi. Now, at this point, I'm unable to actually get it because I can't use Surf because I don't have the Gym Badge from Morty, but there are tons and tons and tons of Pokemon along the way, each and every one of them giving me valuable experience points. And to that end, by the time I save in front of Morty, I've been playing for 7 hours and 3 minutes of in-game time, only an hour and 40 of real time though, so not as bad. This is why I use the Retron 5. Don't get me wrong, I love Pokemon, but I like it more at increased speed. Anyway, we're 15 levels higher than the first Ghastly at level 36. Struggle almost one-shots, but Ghastly then uses Curse, which is really bad, because that means I basically have four turns to win, or Curse will knock me out. Haunter goes for Nightshade. That means I have less turns. It's going to be a two-hit KO. Thankfully, it misses with Hypnosis. I have equipped a Mint Berry just in case I fall asleep, but yeah, this isn't going to work. Gengar misses with Hypnosis. I'm only doing about a quarter of HP now. It misses again with Hypnosis, but by this point, I don't have any more HP and we've lost the battle at level 36. I decide to try again just in case. This time, Struggle does even more to Ghastly, still doesn't knock it out, but it went for Spite, meaning I don't have a curse on me early on. That's really good. Haunter outspeeds and goes for Hypnosis and misses once again. Half HP, Nightshade. So we won't have a curse heading into Gengar. I hit with Struggle and it puts me to sleep. Unfortunately for me, I switched from the Mint Berry to the Quick Claw because I might be able to knock out Haunter a turn early, avoiding a curse. Didn't end up mattering, but that was the idea. I wake up instantly though, hit another Struggle, it goes for Dream Eater, which would have been annoying because it would have healed a bunch. This is going pretty well. Misses with Hypnosis. One more attack. And the Quick Claw comes in clutch. 20% chance of it activating. We knock out the Gengar and this battle is over. Haunter outspeeds and goes for Mean Look. It's going to be a 2 KO. Quick Claw activates again. So it was risky not using the Mint Berry. 
but I am psychic type, so I wasn't as worried about Dream Eater as I usually am. And let's be honest, the results speak for themselves. We were able to get by Morty, I wouldn't say easily. It took me about half an hour of real time between defeating Whitney and defeating Morty. Actually, pretty much every gym leader has taken about that amount of time. But, slowly but surely, we're making our way through the game. And speaking of making our way through the game, now that we have access to Surf, a much larger portion of the game opens up. In fact, you can do the 5th, 6th, and 7th gym badges in any order you want. I kind of figured Chuck wouldn't be too bad because he is a fighting type gym leader who pretty much only uses physical moves, so this should be really easy, no? Primeape goes for Karate Chop, I go for Counter, but then it goes for Leer, not just once, but then a second time, and then it goes for Fury Swipes, which as we know from Clefairy is not very good. Thankfully at this point it switches back to Karate Chop, and I'm at 165 HP, which is insane for the Polyrath. Sorry, 170 HP, we level up. Polyrath though has Hypnosis, which it goes for and thankfully it misses. I should have gone for Safeguard, I went for Mirror Coat again, thinking it was going to go for Surf, and I was wrong. However, by the time I go for Safeguard, it's already too late, and it's put me to sleep. Sleep isn't as powerful in Generation 2, you can't attack the turn you wake up. Unfortunately, although I do wake up and get a Mirror Coat off, which deals half HP, the Polyrath hits with another Hypnosis, and at this point, we actually are going to get knocked out. I don't even want to see Wobbuffet knocked out, I reset before. We're going to have to actually battle Chuck again. The second time with Chuck started out really, really annoying. Last time, Primeape decided to be a pal and went for Karate Chop. This time, it just went for Fury Swipes again and again and again. And because we're only countering one of the many hits it gets, we're actually going to be at way lower HP by the time we make it to the Polyrath. And of course, even though this time I use Safeguard, the Polyrath goes for Surf, and it's going to be close. I think we might win though, because we should have enough HP after that Miracote, and we do. A pretty annoying battle, which for some reason, 2021 JROs thought wasn't good enough for YouTube. So I actually redid the battle, and this time things go far, far smoother, and we win with far more HP. This run was done a little while ago, so I also think I was trolling chat a little bit. Either way, I was far happier with how this second battle looked, so while at the time I was happy with how this battle looked, after what happened with Whitney, I don't know why I cared. That's a question for past j -Rose. Present j -Rose just wants to move on, and the question is, do we want to go and try and defeat Jasmine, or possibly battle Price? I decide to battle Jasmine, and unlike against Chuck, I go for Safeguard right away, predicting the Thunder Wave. I've played this game enough times to know how this Magnemite works. It goes for Thunderbolt, does some decent damage, but that means I'm going to one-shot with Mirror Coat. Since my Safeguard is still up, the second Magnemite is going to go for Thunderbolt again, and I knock it out in one hit again. I predict the Iron Tail, my defense is lowered, I almost one-shot, but then Jasmine uses a Hyper Potion, of course, wait, what? Wait, what? What? What happened there? Okay, I didn't... Is this a glitch I discovered or is this known about? So somehow counter hit, but not only did it hit, it did more damage than it did the previous time. What was it basing the damage off of? Is it because I got a defense drop? Is... How does this work? Well, this time you'll forgive me for eventually resetting to try and test this because I've literally never heard or seen the situation in my entire life. This battle goes far, far worse than the previous one did, but all that matters to me, because we do win, is that once again Jasmine heals with the Steelix, and this time I don't get the defense drop, and so this time we don't knock it out, but we also do a different amount of damage than the last time too. What is going on here? I am so confused. Of course, because we don't knock it out, that gives Steelix more opportunities to attack me, 
after that critical hit from the Magnemite, which is why I said it didn't go so well, we are still able to win, thankfully. It was actually really close. Honestly, at this point, while I was still confused and had many questions, I'd already beaten Jasmine twice. I proved that it was somewhat consistent, I guess, but I'm very, very confused as to what exactly occurred. Funny enough, I think it would have been better if I was at a lower level, because then Steelix would have dealt more damage and I would have knocked it out in one hit. Regardless, what a truly, truly bizarre situation. It would be crazy if I discovered some weird, obscure glitch once again, but I've got to believe there is some documentation I just haven't found on this glitch, and someone can explain why exactly not only counter is working, but dealing different and seemingly inconsistent amounts of damage when it does hit. I'd love to know why. Anyway, it's at this point we have to start doing the Team Rocket segment of Gold and Silver. This is by far one of the worst parts of any Pokemon game I've ever played. The Pokemon are all really underleveled. This has never been fun for me. While it's nice the game gives you freedom as to how you want to complete the various cities, because of that, all the Pokemon need to be at a decent enough level so that you don't walk in on level 40 Pokemon when yours are only level 20, which is normally exactly what the trainers in Wild Pokemon are like outside of the 7th Gym City. But that's just not the way it works here. Very tedious, we gotta use Struggle, it's gonna take a long time. Finally, we're going to go and battle Price. Since the level gap is pretty massive, I think Struggle might be a better idea. I go for it, doesn't quite do half, Icy Wind's not doing very much. Another Struggle. Thankfully, we get a crit and that is Seal Down. I hit Dugong, it goes for Aurora Beam. This looks like it's going to be a 4-hit KO, so it's not too bad. Alright, one more... No, come on. That's not good. Rest is not what I want to see here. I don't know if I can knock it out before it wakes up. And nope, I don't. So I gotta keep just going for it. I get a critical hit. But will it wake up again and go for rest? Yes, it does. And yeah, we're just going to reset. Oh! Oh, come on. So, remember in the last video I talked about how it's important to save? Yeah. This was probably one of my most frustrated moments on stream. I hate the rocket hideout. I finish it. And now I've got to do pretty much the entire thing all over again because I forgot to save in front of Price. Wonderful. I was actually so annoyed, I decided to end stream because I just didn't want to do the Rocket Hideout again, so I'd come back another day when I wasn't so frustrated. After 25 minutes, and no, it didn't actually take that long, I forgot to save as I battled the trainers in Price's gym, not just once, but twice, and reset back to the Rocket Hideout. So if you were wondering why it took me so long to make this video, this is why. I was so annoyed. But anyway, I'm going to battle Price again, hooray. This time I decide to go for Mirror Coat strategies, and you can see Mirror Coat is doing significantly less than Struggle did to Seal. And at first I don't think it's a big problem, but then I remember Seal also knows Rest, and yeah. So, because I healed at the Pokemon Center, I need to go and waste power points, I decide to level up, so I come back at level 46. I also had bought a boatload of proteins, which seem to help because I'm doing way more damage to Seal, and I knock it out in two hits. Dugong goes for Aurora Beam, we're still doing about a quarter, so that's not really an improvement. Another Aurora Beam, another struggle, we're at half HP for Dugong. Unsurprisingly, it goes for rest, I have to use struggle. Thankfully though, I get both the critical hit and quick claw, which you've seen before, activate. And we get the luck we need versus Dugong. Pile of Swine goes for Fury Attack, doesn't do that much. We do enough, but that's a critical hit, so that's actually not very good. It goes for Blizzard and misses. I get a second straight critical hit, but in case you think Quick Law knock it out, Price goes for Hyper Potion and now we have to start from square one. And that's how much damage we're going to be doing, about a fifth. Alright, Fury Attack, like I said, 20% more down. Another Fury Attack, two attacks to go after this one. We get the Quick Claw, it gets the Blizzard, Blizzard actually isn't doing anything. And we get Blizzard and a miss. Doesn't matter. 
Good enough. I think this battle does a pretty good job illustrating the limitations of using Struggle. That while it can be useful for very weak Pokemon, when you get higher level Pokemon that can do a bunch of things, the inflexibility of just having one attacking move that you can spam and that's it, it just isn't good enough. If Dugong and Seal didn't have rest, I think we would have been far better off with Mirror Coat Encounter. Although it would have been pretty difficult with Piloswine, since Fury Attack would have done nothing. It was a really, really bad battle for Wobbuffet. Just a terrible matchup. And now we have to do more Team Rocket stuff, which is awful. Now, without any resetting or mistakes, pretty much, it takes almost an hour to get to Claire the very first time. This is a reason you don't see many gold and silver challenges, by the way. But we finally made it to the 8th gym leader. Let's hope this goes well. The first battle goes pretty poorly. I get paralyzed pretty early on, and even though the Dragonair are going to be a 3-hit KO, and I am going to be able to knock each and every one of them out, because I suffer enough Parahaxes, meaning I don't attack, I only have about 30 HP by the time I get to the Kingdra, and I don't even bother facing it, I just simply reset. The second battle goes a little bit better, at least initially. I'm once again going to eventually be able to knock out all three of Claire's Dragonair. And this time around, I'm able to make it back to the Kingdra with almost triple the HP of last time. However, Surf is doing about 40 damage and Struggle is doing next to nothing. So while Struggle strategies would have been nice, as I said before, as you move on in the game, they start becoming more and more unviable. After leveling up a little bit with the trainers to the south of Blackthorn, I decide to battle Claire again, this time with Counter and Miracoat. I go for Miracoat. Thankfully, Dragonair has a 1 in 4 chance of missing with Thunder Wave, weird Gen 1 and 2 mechanic. Thankfully, I'm able to get off a Safeguard, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. And then this Dragonair starts spamming Surf, each of Claire's Pokemon has a powerful elemental move. This is the Surf Dragonair, as I call it. And we're still doing about one-third of damage every time. So that's pretty easy. One down. Now, this Dragonair is the Thunderbolt Dragonair. It gets a critical hit, so it's going to be a 2 KO. But unfortunately, I forget to redo the Safeguard, and it paralyzes me. So that's not great. I accidentally misclicked Safeguard. It would have been too late anyway. But don't worry, I get paralyzed, so I can't attack. And this time, I don't misclick and go for Mirror Coat. I'm thankfully able to use it. That is two down. The only positive of being paralyzed is this Dragonair can't freeze me. It's the Ice Beam Dragonair. So one Mirror Coat, two Mirror Coats, and three Mirror Coats. All right, only one Parahax. Not bad. Now we're on to Kingdra. Kingdra uses Surf. We saw that did a ton of damage. So Mirror Coat deals over half. This should be it. Of course, of course, why wouldn't it? We should still win? We do. We have 330 HP, and we needed almost every last point to beat Claire, the eighth and final gym leader. But this is a bit worrisome. If Claire was this difficult, how the heck are we going to get past the Elite Four? I mean, the Kanto Elite Four, while it can be difficult, is manageable and predictable. The Generation 2 Elite Four is a step up in difficulty, albeit not in terms of their levels. So I'm a little nervous right now. Before we get to that, we do have to battle the Rival one final time. I know I skipped the Rival 3 battle, but Gold and Silver have so many trainers, I do have to leave some of them out. Another reason is that I just used Struggle last time, and I do use it this time. He leads with Sneasel in the final attempt, Struggle does about half, and although I do take a little bit of damage from Fury Cutter, I'm able to knock out the Sneasel without too much of a problem. Golbat, unfortunately, it's doing about a third and it confuses me, which isn't very good. I'm able to fight through the confusion to hit. It goes for Wing Attack, does pretty decent damage because of a Screech the Sneasel used, and I'm able to knock out Golbat. Hopefully that Screech isn't too big a deal. Magneton, we also do about a third. It misses with Sonic Boom. Again, about a third. This time it goes for Thunder Wave. That's annoying. But because of Claire, I have a Paralysis Cure Berry still equipped. And it activates and I knock out the Magneton. That's pretty fortuitous. 
The main reason I need to use struggle is this haunter. It's doing about half. It goes for curse and we should be fine. Kadabra outspeeds and goes for future sight. We almost knock it out in one hit. Good job, Kadabra. Good Pokemon. The far more concerning thing is that curse is going to take away a ton of HP and it uses recover. We're able to knock it out, but we actually could lose now. And in fact, I don't think we're going to knock out the Feraligator in two turns. So I'm just going to reset. In my second attempt, I try to use Quick Claw instead of Paralysis Cure Berry. This would help by theoretically allowing me to get a second hit on the Haunter before it was able to use Curse. But unfortunately, while that seemed like a really good idea, the Magneton did use Thunder Wave. It actually missed one, but it hit with another. And at that point, we were starting to get really low in HP, and I just didn't think it was worth it. The truth of the matter is, all we really need to have happen is for Haunter not to use Curse. Everything else from the previous battle was fine. I mean, we got a little lucky with Golbat Confuse Ray, but we had more than enough HP to spare. Realistically, if we just don't get a curse, like here we get a mean look, then we're going to be fine. Case in point, after eventually knocking out the Kadabra, I really wish this was a one-hit KO because it would make things a lot easier. For Alligator, it's going to be about a five, maybe six-hit KO. And it's using Slash and doing barely anything. And if we had Curse Up, I think you guys can see we wouldn't have won. But although Feraligator does do a ton of damage to me, and I get a little lucky that I don't get too many crits against me, I am able to knock out the Feraligator and make it to the Elite Four at level 61. Now in my Red and Blue Solo series, 61 is a level a lot of Pokemon finish at, plus the Elite Four is at a much higher level. But this is not the Red and Blue Solo series, and Wobbuffet is not your average Pokemon. I have no idea how this is going to go, and unlike Lee, Will can be quite a bit more annoying. Alright, Will leads with Zatu that likes to use Confuse Ray, so I'm going to go for Safeguard. Psychic is doing barely anything. That said, I have a ton of HP. I go for Mirror Coat and it's doing about 25%, which isn't very bad. And after the second Mirror Coat hit, I realized it's probably doing closer to 33%. And I was right. It did knock out the Zatu. Thankfully, we didn't get the 10% chance it lowered my special, although that may have even helped me. Alright, well, the second Zatu, we're just going to spam Mirror Coat. And this Zatu has a little bit more HP, and it's not doing much more damage. So you can see that it's probably not going to be a 3-hit KO. And it's not. We get the Max Potion Glitch once again. Well, I mean, I guess it's any kind of potion that can be a glitch. It was a Hyper Potion the last time. But many turns have passed since I last used Safeguard, and the Zatu eventually does confuse me. I decide, even though I'm confused, to use a Safeguard for later, and then I'm going to start spamming Mirror Coat again. Thankfully, I snap out of Confusion relatively quickly, and a couple Mirror Coats later, we've knocked out Zatu, but look at my HP, well under half. That's not a good sign. Now, Jinx knows Ice Punch, but it goes for Double Slap, and I go for Mirror Coat, so that's not very good. This time, it goes for Ice Punch, but I went for Counter, and you can see why this is such an annoying game to play. By which I mean this guessing game, finally I guess right, I go for Mirror Coat after it goes for Ice Punch. It's going to be a 2 hit KO, but I'm almost out of HP. It goes for Lovely Kiss, it puts me to sleep, and the battle is over. I don't know why I haven't reset yet, but I'm just going to go for Mirror Coat. I actually do knock out the Jinx, that's not too bad. And it's at Executors I realize that if I don't reset, and I just allow myself to lose, I will gain that experience points, but I'll lose a bunch of money. Money that I might want to invest in various vitamins and whatnot that could make it easier. So I sit and I think and I think, and eventually decide it's time to reset. And it's time to level up, buy some vitamins, and regroup. I try to battle Will again. I use some rare candies, so I'm at a higher level. And this time I'm going to go for struggle. Unfortunately, the Zatu isn't cooperating well with me and confuses me. Not once, but twice. But thankfully, I'm able to struggle my way to victory. The second Zatu is also doing me no favors, using Confuse Ray on the second turn. But once again, luck is on my side. I don't hit myself in Confusion and knock out Zatu number two. This time, I don't want Jinx to go for Ice Punch. Of course it does. I'm dealing back a ton of recoil damage, but of course I am. I'm dealing a ton of damage. 
Thankfully, we do get a double slap, and this is looking far better in terms of HP, but the last two Pokemon have really high defense, Executor and Slowbro. We get Executor, we're dealing about 25%, and it goes for Reflect, so that's going to be about 12%, that's terrible. Executor then goes on to spam Egg Bomb and even gets a crit. Thankfully, Egg Bomb has really, really bad accuracy and misses a whole bunch. Meanwhile, we're able to stall out the Reflect and eventually we can knock out the Executor, but at only 49 HP remaining, that's not very good. I don't think we have enough HP remaining for Slowbro, and we make a very valiant effort. We come really, really close to knocking this thing out. We get it into Red Bar, but unfortunately, we just needed a little bit more attack or a little bit more health, and we didn't have either. So, it was time to level up. And I'd battle Will a few more times, trying every so often to see if this one or two extra levels would make a difference. But at the end of the day, I needed to find a ton of rare candies and get my level all the way up to 73. At 73, something interesting happened. Struggle dealt almost half to Zatu. Unfortunately, looks like we got a bit of a bad roll. And we do get confused and we don't knock it out, but one more level would have done the trick. Still, that's likely to ensure Zatu 2 is a 3 hit KO instead of a 4 hit KO, so that's a good thing. Now, as we battle the Zatu, you might notice I get confused a bunch, because what's the point of putting a Bitter Berry? It activates once and they're going to keep spamming Confuse Ray. At least the Quick Claw is permanent. Yes, we are going to attack ourselves in confusion, but thankfully, eventually, I get a clutch critical hit. And with 266 health, we've made it to Jinx. Now, Jinx isn't quite a 1 KO with Struggle, but it's getting close. It misses with Double Slap, and we knock it out. Executor is dealing about 33 damage. Egg Bomb is hitting this time, so we're not getting those clutch misses. We're still getting crits against us, and we got a bad roll. We have just a sliver of health remaining. Thankfully, no potion used here. We knock out Executor, and I think we actually have enough HP to knock out Slowbro. It's dealing about 25%. Amnesia does nothing. Another 25%. Amnesia's still doing nothing. All right, moment of truth. Psychic. Amnesia doesn't raise special attack, only special defense. And for the first time, after 5 hours and 22 minutes of a challenge, and way more in in-game time, like 20 hours, we have gone past our first of five Elite Four members. I will be saving between members eventually, but I don't know if it's worth it to save here necessarily. Because the truth is, look how long it took us just to get by Will. What will Koga bring? He's a completely different trainer that likes to poison and use really annoying strategies. That will be terrible for a slow defensive Pokemon like Wobbuffet. And I think I just need to see how this battle's gonna go before I start planning strategies. He leads with Ariados, or Ariados, not sure how to pronounce it. But it's looking to be about 3 KO. It's just gonna spam Giga Drain, which while a little annoying, isn't really gonna do all that much to me, and we're easily able to knock it out. For a Triss, I'm a little worried about. Thankfully, Struggle is typeless, and it's gonna be about a 5 hit KO. But once it gets low enough HP, it's going to use Explosion. We get a little lucky with getting a critical hit that it never gets within that sweet spot where it's going to know it's at low enough HP to use Explosion. By the time it's there, we actually knock it out. Had I not knocked it out this turn, I think it would have used Explosion. That's something to keep in mind, but two down. And this is where the battle ends with Muck. Doesn't seem too bad. We do enough damage, but we get poisoned by a Sludge Bomb and it uses Acid Armor. And that combination absolutely obliterates me. We do such little damage, and Poison deals 1 8th in Generation 2, not 1 16th like it does in Generation 1. And the Poison damage, the Sludge Bombs, the Recoil, it racks up, and we come close to knocking out Muck. But this is not a good sign, guys. We didn't even get through 3 Pokemon of Koga after barely getting past Will. And wouldn't you know, my next battle versus Will was a loss. We did all this work, we leveled up a bunch, but this is not consistent. This is not gonna happen easily. 
And if we're having this much trouble versus Will and Koga, what's going to happen versus Bruno and especially Karen? Karen is the scariest trainer for me because I can't use Mirror Coat since most of her Pokemon are Dark Pokemon. Even if we can use Counter and Mirror Coat in Will or with Bruno or with Koga, when it comes to Karen, we're going to have to use Struggle. And so if I'm at too low a level, it's just not going to happen. So why brute force it with these earlier members if we're just going to get completely destroyed by Karen? That said, one of the reasons I'm so good at these challenges is that I am pretty stubborn. And I did try to battle Will at this current level a few more times. I even beat him one more out of the next five attempts, but I was completely obliterated by Koga. As I warned in the previous battle, Koga's fortress does no explosion, deals significant damage, and this time I was at much lower health and once again could not make it even past the muck. So it was time to go back into Victory Road and find some more Pokemon, knock them out, <laughs> and find a shiny Pokemon! A shiny Onix! I can't use it, but first shiny ever in gold, silver, crystal. Yata, I guess? Now that I've leveled up once more, I can battle Will again, and this time, Struggle actually is a two-hit KO against the first Zatu, although it does still look like a range. It even looks like it might be a two-hit KO against the second Zatu, but it survives on just a little bit of health and confuses me. Regardless, I'm just going to spoil this one for you. I do end up beating Will this time. Unfortunately, when you rely on struggle as a strategy, there's not all that much to say about the individual battle. It's just a matter of getting the right luck and being at the right level so that you don't need too many turns. The question is whether at my current level I can beat Koga. We haven't done very well against him thus far, but Koga typically isn't all that difficult. Ariados is still pretty easy. Due to it using Giga Drain, it won't quite be a 2 KO, but it's not really taking all that much HP away from me, so we can knock it out and still be at a pretty good position. Fortress is still a 5-hit KO, and thankfully, it does not go for Explosion this time, meaning I'm going to have way more HP for the Venomoth, which I use Struggle at dealing about half, and I can knock it out in two hits. Koga now sends out the Crobat, and it's a good time to mention that it seems like the order in which the Pokemon are sent out is kind of random, or at least I don't understand exactly how it works. Crobat's looking to be a 3 or 4 hit KO, and that double team's not very good. It goes for Toxic and thankfully misses, and we thankfully don't miss. It actually misses again with Toxic. Clearly that's Koga's strategy with Crobat. Extremely annoying, but it would have been effective. Finally, we get Muck. It seems like we're doing about a quarter of HP. It goes for Minimize. We get a pretty clutch crit, and it goes for Toxic, but too little too late. We've knocked out the Muck, and for the first time, we've made it to Gold and Silver Bruno. Now, I could try to use an Aether or something to get Counter, because Counter might be pretty useful. But for now, I'm just going to go for Struggle and see how it goes, because why not, right? He leads with Hitmon top. Struggle is doing about a third. Hitmon top likes to go for dig, but it does barely anything to me. Just ends up wasting a bit of time, but we can knock it out fairly quickly. Next, we have Onyx, and with a critical hit, it's looking to be about a 3-hit KO. So potentially, it's a 5 or 6-hit KO without a crit. It goes for Sandstorm, which is terrible, because that's 1 8th of my HP every single turn. Far more than any of Bruno's Pokemon can usually do to me. And we are able to knock out the Onyx, but that Sandstorm is concerning. Now, Struggle does a ton of damage to Hitmonlee. Unfortunately, I don't quite knock it out, even after the Sandstorm damage, which realistically actually doesn't matter at all, but we are at pretty low HP for the final two Pokemon. Hitmonchan, we're doing about half damage, Fire Punch does next to nothing, and we're able to knock it out, but do I even have enough HP to knock out the Machamp? I go for Struggle, of course, Rock Slides, and yeah, I think we're going to lose. Unfortunately, another rock slide and we do lose. Very, very close to making it to Karen. Or so it would seem because I was actually having absolutely no luck versus Bruno. 
He didn't even use a max potion, which he can, and yeah, we're going to have to level up significantly. Even at level 88, you would think by this point we would easily get past Bruno, but no. Even at this massive level, nearly double of his Machamp, still after the max potion, I just wouldn't be dealing enough damage, I wouldn't have enough HP, and I would lose. It's been hours I've spent at the Elite Four, and we've yet to even make it to the final member, let alone the champion. This is another good time to remind you every time I lose, I have to go back and use up all my power points. I have deleted Destiny Bonds, we only have 65, but that still is pretty tedious and is contributing to how long this is taking me. Finally, at level 89, I managed to get past Bruno. In this battle, Hitmontop ends up being a two-hit KO. Onyx still is a problem if it uses Sandstorm, but the big thing is I don't get it this time. That's huge, and ideally I'd like to be able to win even if it does use Sandstorm. Hitmonchan is still a 2 hit KO, and thankfully I don't get burned with Fire Punch. Hitmonlee is almost a 1 hit KO, and High Jump Kick barely does anything to me. And then, obviously, comes out Machamp. This time I get a critical hit, and even after the Max Potion, I have so much HP that there's very little Bruno can do. The Cross Chop misses, and we have made it to the Dark-type trainer, Karen. Now, I was very, very, very worried about Karen. We can't use Mirror Coat because it's a Psychic move, and even though that would deal a lot of damage back, it doesn't affect Dark Pokemon, so we have to use Struggle. One way or another, Struggle's going to need to be used in this Elite Four, and that was the most annoying part. If it only weren't for Karen, we could try counter Mirror Code strategies, which could be better, but then we'd have to manage our power points extremely carefully to make sure we had Struggle for Karen. Anyway, enough building her up, this was the first battle. Umbreon is both bulky and trolly. It seems to be doing about a third, and Umbreon eventually gets a Confuse Ray. I hit myself not once, not twice, but three times in Confusion, and along the way, Umbreon gets a critical hit. So once we finally knock it out, we're basically at a half HP with four Pokemon remaining. Murkrow is nearly a 1 hit KO with Struggle, but Faint Attack is doing decent damage. This isn't looking good. Houndoom we do about half, but unsurprisingly, Crunch does pretty decent damage to Wobbuffet. This is where Karen decides to use her Max Potion, but that's not really a big deal, because it still won't get an opportunity to actually attack me. Gengar I was concerned about Curse, but thankfully, after dealing a lot of damage, it goes for Spite. After Recoil, I have 66 HP for Vileplume. This is going to be very close. I go for Struggle, it goes for Petal Dance, and we do knock it out. So Karen is, in fact, a first try victory. We have struggled so hard. Well, that wasn't actually meant to be a pun, but it ended up being one. But I did mean that in the normal sense that this has been very difficult. And yet we've made it to the champion for the first time. I had to ask myself whether I wanted to use Counter Mirror Coat or whether I wanted to use Struggle. Struggle has gotten me this far. We're gonna use it against Lance. Maybe it was a mistake. We have been spending eight hours on this run and don't forget we're at four times speed. So that would mean roughly 32 hours if I didn't do that. Wow. This has been one of the craziest runs so far. Is at least one of the hardest parts over? Let's find out. I use Struggle hoping it does about half, it doesn't. Gyarados goes for Rain Dance. I use Struggle again, and Gyarados anticipates and goes for Flail. Thankfully, it doesn't do as much as I thought it would. No potion from Lance, we knock out Gyarados. One down. Next comes out one of three Dragonite, which are underleveled. We use Struggle, it goes for Thunder Wave, and thankfully we get that one in four chance for a miss. Another Struggle dealing about a third, another Thunder Wave miss, the rain is stopped, and we knock out the first Dragonite. Out comes another Dragonite, same deal, but this time Thunder Wave hits. Unfortunately, that was just to be expected, I guess. It tries to go for a pair of flinch by using Twister. Thankfully, it doesn't work, at least for now. And we do have the Quick Claw, so we're able to outspeed and knock out the third of Lance's six Pokemon. Aerodactyl comes out and goes for Hyper Beam. It barely does anything. I am paralyzed, though, so I also can't attack. 
Aerodactyl needs to recharge, and we're doing about half damage, which is really good. It uses Hyper Beam again. I go for Struggle. We have half my HP for two Pokemon. I think we did it. Charizard goes for Flamethrower. I go for Struggle, and it's not quite doing half, which is unfortunate. It goes for Flamethrower again, and unfortunately, I'm fully paralyzed. Things are starting to look bad. Another Flamethrower, and Struggle comes so close to knocking it out. Lance is probably going to heal. He actually doesn't heal, but I'm paralyzed and hit with Flamethrower. Unfortunately, no Quick Law here, so we're at 53 HP for the final Dragonite. Things were looking so great, but just terrible luck against Charizard. That may have cost me the battle. Dragonite outspeeds and goes for Outrage. I can't attack, and we're done. Very, very unfortunate. Just really, really brutal luck. Thankfully, things are consistent enough that on my very next attempt to make it back to Lance. I feel no need to show the previous battles because I have allowed saving in between if I so choose. Haven't actually done so yet because if I save, I'm kind of locked in and I might want to level up. But in the Impossible series, I do like to save because, I mean, we're using a Wobbuffet. You might notice I'm a level higher, and it seems like we're doing about half damage to Gyarados now, which could mean a 2 at KO, but we don't get the roll. So that's unfortunate. Gyarados is able to get off a Hyper Beam, which, I mean, isn't the best thing, but we are able to knock it out. Next comes out Dragonite number one, and this time it gets off the Paralysis right away. The big problem with that is now it can start attacking me, which it does with Hyper Beam. So not only am I paralyzed earlier, but these things are going to attack me. We had three attacks last time that were nothing because it was trying to paralyze me. We are thankfully able to get a Quick Claw and knock out Dragonite number one, but I'm concerned. We get a pretty clutch Hyper Beam miss before our first struggle. We get Twister, which doesn't cause a flinch. And we somehow get another Hyper Beam miss. That's crazy good luck. So maybe we can win. That's three down. Another Hyper Beam miss, this time from Aerodactyl. This is insanity. Finally a hit, a critical hit. You know what? You've earned that one, Lance. We knock out the Aerodactyl. This is where it all fell apart last time. Flamethrower, we're paralyzed. Another Flamethrower, struggle. It's doing about half. Another Flamethrower... We don't knock it out. And there's another flamethrower struggle. So once again, we're at 59 HP. We're going to lose. It's going to go for outrage, struggle. It's not even doing that much. And yeah, I mean, what did we think was going to happen there? Now, at this time, I probably should answer a question you might have. j -Rose's struggle is clearly not working. In fact, I'm showing you another loss to Lance. I am leveling up, trying to get those ranges, but... It's a slow process considering Wobbuffet's terrible attack. Why not switch to Counter Mirror Coat? The truth is, while that might be more effective, there is a big problem when it comes to Lance. With Aerodactyl being the lone exception, every one of Lance's Pokemon is what's called a mixed attacker, meaning one that both uses physical and special attacks. In fact, we've seen both physical and special attacks used. We've seen Hyper Beam, we've seen Twister, we've seen Outrage, We've seen Flamethrower. Sure, the Charizard so far has just used Flamethrower, but sometimes it seems when I use Mirror Coat, the AI wises up and switches its pattern. I didn't want to risk that, and I knew Struggle might work. Maybe I was being a little stubborn, but it is something I considered, and I worried about the fact that it would just turn into a guessing game, which would make it even more luck-dependent than this strategy already was. But this strategy really wasn't working. We made it back to Dragonite with 115 HP, more than double of last time. And what ended up happening is the exact thing that happened with Bruno when we were losing. That Lance would use that max potion, and so while it looked like we were getting close, we weren't nearly close enough. I normally don't level up this high, and we're getting to a problem that eventually we're going to hit level 100. We don't have a ton of wiggle room, plus we still have Red, who has much higher level Pokemon. So this run looks like it's in serious jeopardy. I've leveled up all the way to level 96, one of the highest we've ever gotten to for one of these challenges. Gyarados is now safely a 2 at KO, and with Rain Dance, all the HP we've lost is because of Recoil, and it's not that much. 
Unfortunately, even with these extra levels, we're still not going to two-shot Dragonite, which is going to give it an ample opportunity to not just paralyze us, but attack us. And if we ever can't attack due to paralysis, it might hit us with another Hyper Beam. So, 411 HP heading to the final four Pokemon, not as good. And for those of you wondering why I don't use Counter Mirror Coat, this second Dragonite's a perfect example when it uses Blizzard and then Hyper Beam. I would have to guess what it's going to use, and if I guess wrong, well, well, I guess don't attack this turn. Plus, I can't attack during the recharge turn of Hyper Beam because it's not actually attacking me. It's really unfortunate that it has to go this way, but I really don't see a better way, to be honest. There's honestly just so much luck involved. Every time I'm paralyzed and can't attack, it's just one more opportunity for Lance to get an attack on me. And although now the Charizard itself is a 2 hit KO, because of the bad luck, I'm unable to get past the final Dragonite, although I see a pathway. It may be a 3 hit KO, meaning Lance might not be in range to heal, so if I got better luck, perhaps we could win. But to be honest, why not try and stack the odds in my favor? I level all the way up to level 100. So for the rest of the run, leveling up is completely out of the equation. This time around, Gyarados doesn't cooperate and uses a Hyper Beam, so I'm at less HP going to Dragonite number 1. It's annoying that even at level 100, we come very close to Dragonite being a 2 hit KO, but it's not quite, so it can paralyze me and get off a few attacks before we can knock it out. Dragonite number 2 is also able to get off a couple Hyper Beams before I'm able to knock it out. Thankfully, I don't get paralyzed, but we're at half HP or just a little bit over it in order to knock out three Pokemon. Possible, but it's not going to be easy. Thankfully, I don't get flinched from Rock Slide, and after Hyper Beam is used, I actually can't attack, but the Recharge turn works in my favor, and I'm able to knock out Aerodactyl without getting attacked again. I'm not getting very good Quick Claw luck. Charizard gets a Flamethrower, and then a second Flamethrower, so 20% chance not really working in my favor right now, I'm pretty sure this is the most amount of HP I've had to this point against Dragonite. It goes for Hyper Beam as opposed to Outrage, meaning it needs to recharge. It needs to recharge, but unfortunately, I think because of my extra levels, I'm actually putting in range to heal. And that's exactly what just happened. The extra levels are actually not working in my favor. That's so annoying. I do get a Quick Law here, and actually, if I get one more, we're gonna win! We don't. <sighs> so you can see a pathway, 20% chance there to win. So we know this is possible, just needs to all come together. Well, maybe it will on the very next attempt. This time, Gyarados decides to be a little kinder and go for Rain Dance. That will do nothing, and we're able to knock it out. We seem unable to get any more luck with Thunder Wave misses. But thankfully, we do actually get some good luck, both by getting Twister as opposed to Hyper Beam, and by getting a Quick Loss. So we have a little bit more HP this time after defeating the first Dragonite. We get another Twister from Dragonite number two, and we come very close to it being a two-hit KO. Unfortunately, it isn't. It gets a Hyper Beam off, but we have nearly 400 HP for the final three Pokemon. Aerodactyl uses Hyper Beam, which is fine. It gives me a couple attempts to knock it out. I only need one. Two Pokemon remaining. Charizard gets Flamethrower. I am able to attack. It goes first, but I'm able to attack. We have 250-ish HP for Dragonite. Come on, this has to work. I go first with Struggle. It's going for Outrage, meaning it's going to get confused. Outrage again. I'm paralyzed. That's not good. Another Outrage, another Struggle. If it's still locked in, though, it can't heal. Unfortunately, it's not locked in, so we get the heal. Well, that Quick Law is useless, but once again, we get a Quick Law, we win. We don't get it. No way. No way we win anyway. Oh, my goodness. 6 HP, guys. We have 581. <laughs> we needed the last 6 points in order to finally beat Lance. Guys, this took me like five hours to do. Five hours, more than the rest of the run combined just to get past the Elite Four. I am not looking forward to the rest of the game 
at all. I mean, the Kanto gyms aren't going to be so bad. In fact, this video is already getting long, so let's go right ahead. You land in Vermilion City. I did try to use Counter Miracle, but struggle, especially at level 100, is just a way better strategy. Lieutenant Surge is pretty easy, especially when you consider we just had to beat Lance. Almost none of his Pokemon can even survive a struggle. The first one that does is Magneton, and it uses Lock-On, which does nothing. And we can easily just sweep through his whole team. Electabuzz also survives, even uses Thunder, even gets a Hyper Potion, but no match. We're at level 100. These are going to be really easy, I think. Sabrina was a little tougher, but for the dumbest of reasons. The Espeon survives and uses Sand Attack. And I get not one, not two, not three, but I end up getting six misses throughout the battle, plus Mr. Mime uses Reflect. And yet even with all those things working against me, I'm still so overleveled that I'm able to defeat all three of Sabrina's Pokemon. And the truth is, if I'm able to beat Sabrina under those conditions, who's going to stand in my way? Certainly not Misty. Her Pokemon survive a single struggle, sure, but they're not able to do almost anything to me. Their Surfs are doing like nothing. And so, this is pretty much how Kanto is going to go, at least until Blue. Blue has a pretty varied team, his Pokemon are at higher levels, and he's got all six. But for these trainers that only have four or three Pokemon at lower levels than the Elite Four, I mean, come on, what do we think's gonna happen? Well, if you thought it meant we we're gonna win every single battle the rest of the way, you'd be wrong. We lose to Erika. And the reason is kind of interesting. Leech Seed. Leech Seed takes away one-eighth of my HP and gives it to Erika's Pokemon, which pretty much, because I'm at level 100 and have a ton of HP, fully heals them. In the end, I end up getting into a standoff versus her Blossom, and while I come very close to knocking it out, and had I got a crit, maybe I could have won, but I didn't get the crit. And even though I have leftovers, which is insane, because with Wobbuffet's HP and how little the opponents do to me, unfortunately, unavailable before Kanto, but I did actually have to battle Erika again. In the second battle, she didn't use Leech Seed, and so you can see without Leech Seed just how horrifically underpowered her Pokemon truly are. It's crazy that I can lose, but unfortunately the AI isn't programmed to see the one glaring weakness in my strategy. Truth is, I would just need to reset for a critical hit so it couldn't use Leech Seed. So for those of you hoping Erika would be the end of this run, she won't be, but she did defeat me, which is pretty cool. I don't even know why we're going to show the battle with Janine. How is it in the post game we have Pokemon under level 40 used by a so-called gym leader? At least she actually gets to have five Pokemon, but they're not very good. At this point, using anything other than struggle would be a huge mistake, would waste a ton of time. So we're just going to continue struggling our way to victory, which ironically is not much of a struggle. Even against Brock, it just isn't happening. In fact, Leftovers is so powerful, in some cases, I'm healing more than I'm actually taking in damage. And so this is where I do want to say something that I've said before in Gold and Silver. I love the games, but for challenges, they can be a little tedious because you get the massive spike of the Elite Four and then this very, very steep downhill easy section and I just think, at this point, it's wasting my time more than anything. Blaine, like Sabrina, only has three Pokemon, and we can defeat them pretty quickly with Struggle. But, we do have to think about Blue. Blue has a decent team, I've talked about Blue. Six Pokemon, high level. So, perhaps Blue might actually give me some trouble. Perhaps I might have to switch to Counter Miracode again. Haven't used that in a while. But there's only one way to find out. Let's go and battle an actual difficult trainer for the first time in like half an hour. Just like in Red and Blue, he leads off with his trusty Pidgeot. I go for Struggle and it Mirror Move Struggle. Didn't even know Mirror Move would work like that. Pretty cool. Struggle is clearly going to be a 3 hit KO. It goes for Wing Attack and like I said, Leftovers is restoring all my HP. Not just from the attacks, but from the recoil damage as well. So we're at full HP heading to Alakazam. We go for Struggle, it goes for Psychic. This time we'll actually be slightly below full health, but two Pokemon in, that's pretty okay. Next comes out the Rhydon. It has pretty good defense, but K 
can't really do all that much to me. So while it will take four hits, maybe even five to knock it out, and Sandstorm is pretty annoying, at least the Leftovers is restoring about half the Sandstorm damage. So, a little bit of a scary situation, but we still should be fine. Gyarados comes out, we go for struggle, it's doing about a third, Hyper Beam it can't attack, and now the Sandstorm has subsided. Full Restore is a little not great, but without the Sandstorm, once again, we're actually starting to gain HP. And we're easily able to knock out the Gyarados. Now, Executor gets some pretty crazy good luck. We get a critical hit on the first turn with Struggle, and a critical hit on the second turn. So what should have been a 4-hit KO ends up being a 2-hit KO. Finally, our Canine comes out, but at this point, it's very clear after that Flamethrower that I'm going to win. Unless it got a critical hit every single attack, which it doesn't, but I do. Blue is no problem for my Pokemon. And we are even able to defeat the hardest of the Kanto Gym Leaders in a single attempt. That said, the massive difficulty spike from the Kanto Gym Leaders to Blue and then to Red is absolutely absurd. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if this is even going to be possible. But, we've made it this far, we can't level up, we just have to try our best and hope that some way, somehow, I can figure out a strategy. At first, I tried the strategy that had gotten me here, to use Struggle. But unfortunately, immediately I encountered an issue. Pikachu missed with two straight charms, and then Espeon used Reflect. I reset, but as soon as I did and battled Red again, the charm stopped missing. And with charm not missing, I saw just how little damage I would do versus Pikachu. Which is nothing. And that would be for the entire battle. And it can use charm a lot. So in fact, after using Struggle for a large percentage of the game, the only way I'm going to be able to do this is by using Counter and Mirror Coat. I decided to use Safeguard so that Thunder couldn't paralyze me, and thankfully Pikachu went for Charm. It goes for Thunder, but I don't knock it out in one hit. We then get to see the good old Potion Glitch, not once, but twice, as Red decides to use Full Restores, but unfortunately, my Safeguard wears off, Critical Hit, Paralysis, so I decide it's time to try this again. And unfortunately, pretty much the same thing happened. Not exactly the same way, but I go for Safeguard. This time, Red misses with Thunder a few times, which actually ended up being bad for me, because of course, when it finally hits, it gets the Paralysis, which is exactly what I didn't want. But I decide just to see what's going to happen, and probably we're going to have to reset anyway. Finally, we get to Espeon, and it's clear that Psychic is going to be a 3 hit KO. There's also a 10% chance it could lower my special, which may actually be a good thing. Because that means Miracote will end up doing more damage, and I have plenty of HP. In the end, no Parahax, and I'm able to knock out the Espeon. Then came out Snorlax, and oh my god. So first, it starts spamming Amnesia, so I can't counter that. Then, it starts spamming Body Slam, and I can't attack because I'm paralyzed. Finally, I see how much counter will do, and it's about a third. This is kind of problematic, because once Snorlax gets to one-third of its HP, it goes for rest and restores all of it. While it's sleeping, it goes for Snore, which I can counter, eventually, but it doesn't do very much. And it would appear, if I only counter a single Snore and two Body Slams, it once again puts Snorlax in range to use rest which is not good. I was kind of getting annoyed of dealing with the paralysis, so I decided to try one more time, and this time just really try hard not to get paralyzed. Thankfully, finally, I was able to line everything up against the Pikachu and make it past without getting paralyzed. The Espeon was pretty much the exact same thing as last time, and so I've made it to Snorlax under ideal circumstances, I guess. Of course, Body Slam has a 30% chance to paralyze, and I forgot to use Safeguard, and of course you know it's about to happen. And eventually, what happened last time starts to happen this time, so I just simply reset and try again. Again. 
As I get through the Pikachu and Espeon again, this is a good enough time to mention that this is another reason why gold and silver aren't as good for challenges, and specifically why I don't think I'll do a solo run series in them. You see, with the Elite Four, I can at least make a provision I can't save to try and get some consistency. But for Red, he's just one trainer, and while he's way harder than any of the trainers in pretty much any game, other than Red and HeartGold SoulSilver, at least level-wise, because he's just one trainer, we can start resetting for ideal RNG, and that makes things a lot less stressful. This time I go for Safeguard, and I actually messed up. I needed to use Safeguard the second turn, so I'm gonna have to not counter the first Body Slam, but that's fine. As we expect, after we counter the first two Body Slams, it goes for Rest. I went for Safeguard to try and preserve Power Points, but what became abundantly clear to me... Wow, that was difficult to say is that I wouldn't have enough power points to knock out the Snorlax. Essentially, I needed two Snores, and I couldn't get a critical hit, because then Snorlax would rest. Essentially, I needed to have enough HP that it thinks it doesn't need to go for rest when it really should, and only that way am I going to be able to knock it out with counter. If anything else happens, then the Snorlax will be in range for a rest, we run out of counters, and then we can't do anything. So I went and picked up all the power point ups I could and went to battle red again. We've seen the strat versus Pikachu a few times, nothing new here. We've seen the strat versus Espeon a few times. It's just gonna take three hits and we gotta be careful with our safeguards to make sure that one is set up for Snorlax because I don't want to be paralyzed there. Three Miracos knocks out Espeon and now here comes the Snorlax. So it goes for Amnesia. I shouldn't have gone for counter but I do but I have plenty of power points. One Body Slam, Safeguard fails, so I'm going to use another one. We are going to heal with lefties, so we should be fine. Another Body Slam and another Counter. It's going to go for Rest, except it goes for Body Slam. And I didn't understand what the heck happened there, and it goes for Body Slam again. And then I go for Counter, and it goes for Rest. So is it predicting what I'm going to do? That's not really fair, now is it? <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get the RNG I want. Snore, no flinch, Counter. Snore, no flinch counter, body slam, nope, still rests. So I need that body slam to crit, essentially, so I can knock it out. I don't see another way. I mean, I'm already in this battle, so I might as well try again. We get a snore counter, another snore counter, body slam counter, body slam. Oh, of course, that one crits, but <laughs> I just wanted to see body slam instead of rest. Yes, first time past the Snorlax. Three down, three to go. Next comes out Charizard. I'm anticipating Flamethrower. I get it. I go for Miracote. One more will knock it out. Another Flamethrower, another Miracote. But that did a lot of damage. We don't have a ton of HP to spare. Now Blastoise. It goes for Surf. It's doing just about half. Will we knock it out? We do. One Pokemon remaining, the Venusaur. And it knows Solar Beam. Turn one, it takes in Sunlight, but I can heal. Turn two... We're gonna win. Unless it goes for Synthesis, which does less because we're in a cave. <laughs> All right, just one more Solar Beam, we win. There it is. There it is. Oh my, we actually did it and we finish it off with Counter Miracoat. You guys thought it would be struggle the whole time, but at the end of the day, in just under 11 real world hours, we have beaten Gold and Silver with just a Wobbuffet. I seriously doubted whether this would be possible, and it was extremely tedious at times, but I know that Wobbuffet tends to be a challenge a lot of people have a lot of trouble with, so I'm very happy that at least in the original game where it debuted, we can 100% say without any glitches, cheating, or items, that we can beat the game with just a Wobbuffet. This video's gone on forever, so I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Take care.